Hi, welcome to another one of my Altrix videos. What we're going to look at today is a problem that most people run into sometime or another, and that is how to take data that's come to you via a PDF document. And that involves converting that PDF document to text and then converting that text to data. I'm looking at this as a multi part video, but rather than each part being a new pathway to the solution, I'm going to use each part of this to introduce some new widgets that fit within a category of what we're trying to accomplish in this short little exercise. So those three parts are first to talk about getting that PDF into text. Altrix allows you to do this through its R widgets and its R interface and engine. We'll use the text to columns widget. We'll use the regex widget as well in order to get that data into a textual format that we can use. If you're not familiar with the Altrix and its R interface, as well as this overall process, I recommend that you go out to the web and check on the Altrix site because they have what is the basis for my learning of how this worked. And that is an overview of how you can use Altrix to get Word or a PDF document into text. It's a good source for information and a follow-up to what we're going to talk about today. To start with, the first thing you have to do is have predictive analytics in the R engine installed inside of your Altrix. And to do this, you must download a separate installation because it comes in two parts. This short little document on out there with Altrix gives you the overview, but you'll need to go to the download site and download the predictive tools which will get you the R interface. Interesting enough that when you download the predictive tools, it's actually called the R installer that you will download. So the two go hand in hand or something, some part of the same coin. So I downloaded this version, which is for the current version I have, because I didn't install it with the latest version that arrived. And then I ran the R installer. What that gets me once I've done that is it gets me some additional widgets to use as well as the R engine and you can tell if you have it installed by going into your developer, developer category and looking for a widget that is just the big letter R. If you have that you are ready to begin the process but you're not yet ready to build your workflow. What we must do is get the interfaced applications libraries installed in our R engine that will work with PDF files and with Altrix's R. To do that and to write your interface to pull the data in, it is easier to cut and paste, so I will put this into a comment, but essentially what we're going to do is go into the R engine and have it install these two packages. Once those two packages are installed, we can then configure a widget to go ahead and read our PDF file. If you already have a separate R engine, you can use that R engine to install the packages. If not, you'll need to use the Altrix R engine to install those. You can find those by going into Program Files, Altrix R, which is then the version of R that you have installed. In this case, it's 4.0.5. Inside of bin, there is r.exe. You'll need to run this on your machine. A warning that you must run this and install the libraries as the administrator. So if you're using a corporate machine where you do not have administrator license, you'll have to engage your IT department. But you would right click on the r.exe, run as administrator. 
I approve it to run and it brings up this little R text interface. What I will do here, but not within this video, is at the command prompt I would first type in install.packages rcpp then install.packages PDF tools. Once they have completed, I would type in the Q, open and close parentheses to take me out of the engine, and then I would have the libraries installed that I can use. Let's leave this behind. And we're ready to start talking about Alteryx. So I will simply bring up my solution and we will be working on this over the next three videos. This one being video number one. So here's my workflow and I've sort of hidden the answer from you so that you can't immediately run through this, I guess. And I've done that and also this is great for testing purposes by including my different pieces of code that is the workflow through the widgets inside of here in documentation is inside of a tool container and I have the ability to turn this tool container on and off to actually have it whether it executes or not. And in this case we're going to talk about this video is that once you have R installed with Alteryx then all that you will need to do is to generate a couple of widgets that will go ahead and read your PDF file. So I'll expand this out and we will talk about what is in here. So the first thing that we need to do is to have a text input, which is an input, text input. I must give the column name full path and then give it the full path name of my PDF file. This is a great opportunity to think about how you could turn this into an application because you could have someone actually choose that file and feed it into this process. But that's the subject of another video should you find a need to see one. I then will bring in off of the developer my R widget, which you see here, and I'll need to configure it. As you can see, this is the text that I have at the beginning of the presentation for this video, but also will have it in the comments as clear text. And essentially, I open up a read data frame that takes the input, so it connects the input to R to my PDF file. I then go ahead and take that input and pass it in as the PDF to text reader, so it will read that file. I create modify that and create a data frame and then send the output from that frame into my Alteryx workflow. If we run this very quickly, oh by the way it would help if I showed you my PDF file. So this is what we're reading in. We're having Mary Ann who does clothing for our puppy costumes and she goes ahead and sews the costumes for each of the puppies and then sends us a bill for them. And so at the every two weeks, she sends us an invoice. And in that invoice, it's a PDF file. It has on it the name of the puppy. This is the identification that she's required to give us, which is the puppy's name, his breed, the kennel, and his birth date or her birth date. It then has which costume she sewed when she sewed it and what she's charging us for that. She also includes a total for each of the puppies. She also has on there any kind of credits that need to be issued and they're in accounting format which we need to deal with. And then finally there is an invoice total. She has some header information and some trailer information and we'll want to pull some of this data off into our data set when we finish with that. So let's go ahead and look at how the R widget converted this into text. What it has done is that it has returned us one very large string that is the entire stream of data. 
And what we'll want to do is to split that data into rows because what the R engine has done with that is in between each individual row from our PDF file, this would be a row, it's put a carriage return, but that doesn't actually split the data. So we need to split the data at those carriage returns. We will use one of the widgets that Altrix did not completely keep clean, which is the text to columns. Because if you're not familiar with this widget or you didn't actually look a little bit down below, it not only splits the text into columns, as its name implies, but it also will split that text into rows. So we give it the name of the column to split, which is text coming in. And our delimiter is the backslash N, and that is a carriage return. Once we run that, you see that we now get the data separated out. One row for each row in the PDF file. So we have the headers, we have the blank lines, we have the information that we need to read out. And what we'll need to do is to parse this information in order to get the data out. I caution you on not to try and create a universal parser. It will give you nightmares and you will never be done with it. Instead, try to make as intelligent a parser for the data set that you need, which is essentially for one PDF file. And my further recommendation is that when you do create this process and you'll be using it for production, that you turn it into an application and get someone to actually have this data read and let them see the output so they can determine whether or not it's properly interpreted it because you'd never know one, kind, one slight little change in data would cause this to all come crumbling down. So you really need someone to eyeball the results and make sure they match what is on the file itself when you start it. Once they're happy with it, then they can process that data into your data store. What we want to do on our filter is discard some of these records, basically all these blank records we don't need. That's accomplished quite simply with a is not empty. So anywhere that there is some data on these records, it will keep them. And you can see from the output, all those blank lines have been thrown out. That's pretty good. And then the next thing we want to do is go ahead and get this data broken down into columns so we can begin to process it. Breaking this down into columns, there's many different methodologies you can employ, but the easiest one is to get a separator placed everywhere that you have multiple blanks. So anywhere that you have two or more blank spaces, you want to create a separator, separator and then remove all of those blanks. The easiest way to do that is with the regx tool, which is next in line. What I do with this regx is I give it an expression and it will take that expression and replace that, info, that data that matches that expression. In this case, we're going to replace it with the pipe. So we're going to put a pipe between each of the pieces of data in each of the records. The way that we represent two or more spaces is the backslash s identifies a space. Inside of braces, we give it a two and a comma, which means that two or more spaces. So anywhere it finds two or more spaces within the line, it will replace it with the pipe. And as you can see here, we have now delimited this information through the, this next step. Finally, what we'll want to do is to go ahead and turn each of these tags or pieces of information that are delimited by a pipe into a separate column. And now we will again go back to our text to columns widget. In this column, we are going to split it to columns. The delimiter is the bang. I gave it eight just to make sure we had plenty of space because we can discard this as we go through and actually identify the pieces of data that we need. Leave any extra data in that last column just in case we have to process it. And we're going to call each one a tag. Once that has run, you can see it takes this text and it creates multiple tags. For example, the header to the document is an empty tag. If 
followed by Marianne's Canine Close invoice, August 15, 2021 for the invoice date, going down further for the actual D4, D details for a, an item that she sewed. It will have a blank in tag one, Vampirina, with a costume name here, the date, and the amount that is billed. We also have the total. We have the page number and the invoice total all represented. If you scan through this fairly quickly, you'll see that it indeed looks like this, but now each of these pieces of information is placed into a separate column, except for here, the header, which is the comma separated, to identify the puppy. But we'll work on making this data flow into a proper structure in a subsequent video. In this case, we have simply got the data ready to be processed. However, the one thing I want to do very quickly here is filter out what I call the unwanted rows. And I do that by creating a custom filter. So now that the data is broken out into tags, I can say that if tag 2 equals total, we don't want those records. If tag 1 equals puppy, we don't want that header. Or it starts with the word page for tag 2, then we know it is a page number. So that throws out the headers for each of the columns, the totals, and the page. Everything else is information that we want to process further. So very quickly, what we've done here is made sure that our Alteryx has been updated so that it has the predictive tools, which includes the R engine and R widget. We have gone into the R engine and loaded two libraries that were necessary to process a PDF file. And then we've written a very short workflow that takes our PDF file into the R widget in order to create a textual version of that PDF file that we can then begin to process. In this process, we have split that text into rows of data and then delimited the data into separate fields so that we can further determine how to get the data out of it. Check out the next video that I'll be creating in this flow, which talks about how to do some data conversion using macros that we'll utilize within this process. Check the comments for the details. Subscribe. Send me some comments if you have additional questions or more information that you need. I will be happy to answer you and make more videos if necessary. Thanks for watching.